Close Mike Trayburn's RV Center here to congratulate you on your Forest River Wildwood 26 DBUD travel trailer. I'm going to walk you around it, show you how to use a few things to get the best out of your camping experience. Let's start by arriving at the campsite. A few things to take into consideration when you're parking. On your campsite, leave plenty of room for this awning to come in and out. On your off campsite, besides your slide, I also want you to think about where your power water connection is going to be. You're going to be all the way in the rear on your driver's side or your off camp side power water connection park accordingly so you can utilize facilities at the campsite once you arrive unhook our hitch first thing you do is level our unit unit comes with a power tongue jack night docking light should you arrive at night simply raise or lower your unit until you're level once you are level Next thing we're going to do is stabilize it. Before going there, uh, should you lose power under this rubber stopper right here, this little hand crank right here, get on a, look, down in there, and that'll get that up and down with or without power. Speaking of power, check your battery post every now and then. Make sure nothing's wiggled loose going down the road. Looks we got our unit level. Next we're going to do is stabilize it. On the rear and the front, you've got power stabilizing jacks. I'm going to recommend stabilizing jack pads. They're going to protect the feet of your stabilizing jacks from dirt and debris and hot blacktop in the summer. Good investment. Grab a four-pack from our store with your 10% off coupon. Put them down and run these down. Sometimes one side will fall before the other. Sometimes they'll come down together. Just keep an eye on them when you run them down. You place your stabilizing jack pads underneath it. Now remember, our unit's already level. So our whole objective here is to stabilize the unit. So we're only going to bring these down until they're taut. Once it feels like it's going to start lifting our unit, we stop. One side contact, the other side solid, and stop. Remember, we don't want to get rid of that level. Let's put it down the front. The ones in the rear. Could extend back here as well same thing every now and then you may have to adjust this foot if you keep it loose it'll set down nice for you Went the wrong way so again we're bringing bringing it down just until the taunt There's also a hand crank. I'll show you as we're walking around the unit. I'll put it on the other side of the front one. So there's a hand crank that you can get these up and down manually should you lose power as well. Got our unit level and stable. Let's hook up our power and water. Power cord. Gonna go in at about that blue light means you got power in here. It's gonna go in at about 11 o'clock. Turn that to noon. Put that black washer on. It's gonna lock that on there for you. At the end of that 30 amp service, should you need to plug into a 110, there's a 30 to 15 amp reducer. It comes in your convenience pack. It's power hooked up. You took up your water. All the way in the rear here is gonna be your city water connection. First and foremost, a water pressure regulator. This water pressure regulator is going to reduce water pressure to 40 to 50 psi, protecting the lines in your unit. Always use this because you don't know what the water pressure is at different campsites. Hook that up. Hook up your hose. Don't turn your hose on yet. Let's go find your hot water heater. Didn't take long. It's right around the corner here. Now this door will lift right up off here. Line that up. And all we're doing at this point is making sure that drain plugs in. Throw some plumber's tape around that. Not putty. Putty will gum up on you. Some plumber's tape around that, get that in there uh, nice and snug. Once that's in there all the way tight, you can go ahead and turn that hose on. And after our hose has been on, we're going to go ahead and go open up our slide, get in there and open up all of our water lines. Get the showers open, sinks, get the water flowing through them. Once you get a nice steady flow of water, shut them off, and you're all set to camp at a campsite. Now let's say we're going to go dry camping, boondocking we like to call it. 
In that case, we're gonna fill up our fresh water or potable water tank. No need for a water pressure regulator here. We're gonna gravity fill this ho with a hose. Two ways to tell it's full. One, there's an overflow valve right up in here. Or two on the inside where you check the levels of the black and gray tanks. There's also a fresh water button. Don't leave this unattended while you're filling it. Once it's full, remove your hose, put that cap on, and then when you ever, whenever you wanna utilize that water, you'll turn on your water pump. Don't turn on your water pump and hook to the city water on the other side, that's already pressurized. All right, we're all set to camp. We got power and water. We're we'll gonna walk you around the rest of the unit. Let's we'll start back over here at our docking station area. Again, our power. This is where we'll plug in our cable or satellite at camp sites. Black tank flush. We'll talk about that when we dump our black and gray tanks. Again, our city water connection. Hot water heater. If you're prepped for a backup camera, yeah. Cover for your spare tire. Great to keep that on there. Keeps it from dry rotting. Our main low point drains. Be right there. <coughs> Again, our rear stabilizing jacks. On your awning, you do have a pitch control. If it's sprinkling and you don't want the rainwater to bunch up, pull down on this and that'll tilt it all one way. However, awnings are made recommended to be left out in the rain or high winds they're mainly for shade so keep that in mind when you're using it separate entryway door here coming down our campsite up top we've got a vent for our overhead vent inside a couple of outdoor speakers 110 and cable hookup in case you want to hook up a tv over here again our freshwater tank our freshwater drain is going to be this big white handle right here Flue for your furnace, a few things on that. One, make sure it's never blocked. Two, if you're running your furnace, so you're clear of it, it does get hot. And also they do uh, make bug guards, screens that you can purchase and put over those. Here's a spot for your spray port hose. It's in your storage up front. Just quick connects in there in case you want to spray off your griddle. Pull your griddle out, there's your quick connect hose. And your quick connect is right here behind your door Set up your fridge out here make sure that you don't just close this but lock that during travel continuing down we've got our stabilizing jacks here our pass-through storage got a little netting here those were designed to hold on to your cranks. You'll see those when you pick your unit up where they're at. Coming up front, your propane does uh, come with a cover. We'll be on a regulator. Uh, just lefty-loosey to turn. Start these up. Beside your battery up here, you've got a battery disconnect. It'll disconnect all the battery power to your unit. It'll come in important later when I show you your carbon monoxide and propane detector. There's your spray port hose for your quick connect over there. Here's the hand crank for your manual override. Um, for your stabilizing jacks, you see a slot here. You have to line that up with the slot in there to get these up or down. You can bring these up manually. On your slide, they do sell a... Um, Wiper seal lubricant to keep these nice and flexible and pliable over the years. I recommend having some of that put on every couple times a year. The sun takes a beating on leather, or excuse me, on rubber. Back here is our black and gray tanks. Again, we'll talk about those when leaving the campsite. Covers everything out here. Let's take a look on the inside. Coming up inside your unit, first thing I would like to point out is your fire extinguisher. Make sure that you and everyone in this camp with you knows the fire extinguisher is located by the entry doorway in case of an emergency. Got a 110 with GFCI reset right here. And then coming up here, we've got our control panel. I'll start up top with battery, fresh, black, and gray tanks. Gray tanks number one and two. Water pump. That's where you turn on your water pump and using your fresh water. 
water heater, exterior lights, which is your awning lights, and interior, which is also on a dimmer. Touch to shut everything off. Or touch to dim it. Hold your finger on it to bring it back up. Slide control, which we utilize when closing it, and our awning. On your awning, you only want to run these out until you can see your brown bar and that flap has fallen down to 90 degrees. If you hold the out down past that point, this will continue running itself out and start to run itself up onto itself. So keep an eye on it whenever you run it out and only run it out as far as you want to. And shut off those awning lights. So you these slam locks work best when gently slammed. Let's come up in the unit. Got a little drying rack for your dishes here. Plumbing. Keep an eye on your plumbing. There's an access panel right there. Everything's almost all PEX nowadays. Easy to maintain. Just make, remember, if you travel a lot in your unit, you're bouncing things around. Check joints. Make sure everything's staying kosher and you're not getting any leaks anywhere. You got a self-explanatory microwave. Light and fan for your cooktop. This glass top here makes an excellent backsplash. Turn on our panel light. You'll just turn this to high and then hit your spark, and that will light these. All three, same thing with your oven. Turn this to your uh, light there, spark it here. No need to get in there and light it. You look in there, you'll see that it's lit, and then just turn this to your desired temperature. Make sure when you're traveling, the glass top is down. And that this is over your fridge, so this don't bounce around. All your controls for your fridge and freezer are inside on both. Down below your fridge is going to be your breaker box and fuses. A ton of 15s, a uh, couple 40s, 30s. Highly recommend having some of those with you when you go. Bring it right over to the floor here to our 12 volt carbon monoxide propane detector. The reason I mentioned that's 12 volt, that is always running off your battery. So if you do happen to dry camp where you're not plugged in anywhere and you're gonna be gone for the day, you don't need electricity on anything else. Use that battery disconnect up front to keep this from your battery down. Up above that is gonna be our thermostat. We go right through that. Uh, let's go right into the AC and turn that on. Cool high. Let's have a quick dump on them too. Cool it right up in this room alone. Shut that off. Serve it all the way through everything. Oops, I'm going right past off. Right to off. Generally, AC units will shut off kind of quickly. This one did. Now I'm going to turn on your furnace. Heat. And when that cranks up. Now you'll notice when I go through and shut that off. It's actually going to take a few minutes for the furnace fan to cycle through before it actually shuts off. So expect that. Don't think it's not shutting off. A nice big closet here. One touch lighting up top. Access panel to uh, your water pump to bypass and to put in your antifreeze for winterizing. Come back in our bathroom again. Separate entry doorway. 110 here. We've got a hand crank open. Exhaust vent. Again, make sure this is locked. Just talking about in there, our bunk areas, both got charging ports and one touch lighting as well. Other lights down here. Something lights up good on here. This will fold up. The hydraulics in the back for you to uh, use this as storage. Just shutting off lights as I go it saves me time in the end. 
on your table over here your dinette this will open up for storage on both sides here tabletop will wiggle up remove your legs put the tabletop back down onto these slots here put a couple flat cushions on top and i'll give you a big sleeping area here manual and other things to read through we've got a sofa that has our storage here or this will jackknife down into a bed as well TV does have a swivel. You have to pull down on this to release it, and that'll pull it out. When you arrive at campsites, go into your home, go into your menu, run a digital channel scan, and that'll allow you to pick up all the local channels. Make sure that before you run that channel scan, that this green light is on. That's gonna be your antenna. Antenna's there. Amazon Fire TV starting up. Blow that. Free on sound system. Just want you to see this working. There you go. So create your account, etc. Shut that off. The sound system. Below that, there's a fireplace. Uh, not just for looks anymore. I can show you all the pretty colors. Thing now is the heat. There's a timer one hour, two hours, three hours, four hours, up to nine hours of shutting it off. Low, high. Feeling the heat already. So, if you're at a campsite, you're plugged in, it's chilly in here in the morning or evening, instead of turning on your your propane and turn it on your furnace crank up this electric heat on this it'll get it toasty in here in no time it'll save your gas that you pay for not them lighting back here in our bedroom storage underneath here access to your storage from outside which reminds me always have your outside storage locked at night don't matter if you're in the trailer or not Sometimes those storage areas come right up underneath your bed. We don't need that. TV in this back room here. There's closet with more individual lighting here. Yeah, there's right the TV. Again, on a swivel. Pull down on this to release it. This lighting back here is one touch as well. Nice cubby holes here. Charging port, emergency exit window. Flip this up, push it up, grab that and yank it out, and that'll clear your screen. I think that about covers everything on the inside. Let's act like we're leaving the campsite and close the unit up. Let's start by coming to our main control panel, shutting off our lights. Now I can see everything that's an accent light that I need to walk through and shut off. I know that I've already done the bedroom and bathroom. In the bathroom, make sure your vent's closed. Once you've got all your accent lighting off, it's so easy to see with everything shut off. Oh, there's another one. Now I'll come back to our control panel, turn everything on, and say doors and drawers. Look through the unit. Make sure all doors and drawers are closed. Nothing's going to impede your slide from coming in. We've went in our bathroom, closed our vent. Lock in our fridge. Now we're just going to hit slide in. So start bringing your slide in. I just want to mention 
uh, when you do arrive and you're opening up your slide, go down there by that bunk area right before it's all the way open and make sure that, that curtain has cleared so it doesn't get caught behind the corner of the slide there. Just got all your curtains down in here to block out all the work going on up in the workshop here. All right, shut off our interior lights and exit the unit. Now the biggest thing about these steps, bring them up or down. You wanna leave this exterior door all the way open. Otherwise, when you bring this down, this part will catch on the door. Feet are also adjustable. Pushing in on this, and then just move it to where you want it. Set it up inside, lock it in. When you leave the dump station, lock, deadbolt, lift and turn this handle, you're ready for travel. We're out boondocking. I'm going to bring up these stabilizing jacks by hitting retract. Once them are up, we're going to come over here and dump our freshwater drain. Just pulling on that handle there. Hook up our hitch. And then head to the nearest dump station or home, whatever we're in need of. If we are at a campsite, we'll unhook our power, our water, our cable. Bring up those stabilizing jacks, hook up our hitch, and head on up to the dump station. At the dump station, park accordingly. Your dump's going to be between your tires and the rear, almost all the way to the rear here. Got 10-foot hose, comes your convenience pack. Hook that up. Pull your black handle. Now that's going to be your sewage. When that sounds like it's no longer draining, go inside. Look and see if it shows empty or close to it. If it does, come back out here. Leave that handle open. Grab the hose at the dump station and hook it up to your black tank flush. Again, emphasizing your black handle is left open, turn that on, let it run for a good five minutes. You know, wash that nastiness out of your black tank. When that's done, remove that hose. Make sure all that wash out you just put in there has drained out. Then you can pull your, or close your black handle and pull this gray handle. I'm just gonna dump your first gray back here. When that's no longer draining, gray tank number two you'll pull. That'll bring the rest of it open. Of course, leave this one open while you do that. It's gonna bring the rest of that gray out. While my gray tapes are dumping, come on around here uh, to your low point drains first. Get up underneath there and open them up. And then we're done, come to your hot water heater. If we're not gonna camp for a while, I wanna get this stagnant water out of here. Lift up on this pressure release valve. That's gonna dump hot water there, so be careful. When you're done, push that back down, otherwise your door won't. Close and then you can pull your drain plug. Also on your hot water heater. If it doesn't seem to be working time to time, come out here look to see if these are bubbled up. If they are, simply press them back in. I think they're over overheat recharge or reset, but they are a reset. When them grays are done, close that gray, grab your sewage hose, and conveniently and sanitarily store it right here in your bumper. first and head on home again we thank you guys so much for your purchase hope you enjoy this wildwood for many years to come happy camping